Dating has always been a challenge, but we're probably living in one of the most complex times in human history. In this video, I'm gonna to attempt to simplify the path into and through the dating world using some of my own thoughts, experiences, information I've come across in the form of books, research papers, and so on. This video is gonna focus on the first stage of dating, which I call the kind of introductory stage. The other stages in terms of like the getting to know them phase or the relationship stage will be covered in later videos. So feel free to subscribe if you're interested in that. So I wanna start this video with a thought experiment. And you might not know where I'm going with this initially, but trust me, this is absolutely fundamental to how modern dating works. So imagine a large room or hall with say 200 people. A hundred of them are men and a hundred of them are women. And the goal is each of them are given a hat and the hat has a number on, but they can't see what that number is. And that number is gonna range somewhere between one and 10. And the goal of the exercise is every guy needs to try and find a girl with the highest possible number. And each girl has to try and find a guy with the highest possible number. And again, you don't know what your own number is. You just need to get a partner with the highest possible number written on their hat. Now, if you imagine this playing out, what generally happens is the people with the highest numbers get a crowd of people surrounding them and people with low numbers struggle to get anybody. But obviously you don't know what that number is yourself, but you can generally kind of infer what number you have based on how in demand you are. And the idea is that the people with say, seemingly a lower number will try to go to people with a higher number and try to grab that person. But that person seeing the number that you have will generally, based on what number you think you are, will either say kind of yes or no, or kind of gravitate towards that person or not. So if you're getting a lot of attention, you can generally kind of bet that I must have a high number. But if lots of people with low numbers are coming to you, you're probably not gonna be interested because again, the goal of the exercise is to get the highest possible number in your partner. And interestingly, this is actually what happens in nature, both in the animal kingdom and in humans. Now, obviously in both examples, there are no hats being worn, but there is this kind of concept of this kind of invisible number that correlates with your overall desirability. So the official term for this kind of invisible number or concept is called mate value. And I just wanna stress that mate value really is your apparent desirability from a distance, as opposed to kind of telling anything specific about your personality or who you are or what kind of values you have or anything like that. This is just purely from like an outside perspective, looking in, what kind of level of desirability do you have? And the reason I'm mentioning this is because the whole world of early stage or introductory dating is based on this kind of concept of mate value. It's how people see you when you go on dating apps. It's how people see you when you're in a bar and someone notices you from a distance. They don't know anything about you, but what they tend to judge, particularly based on romantic attraction, is a collection of things that collectively are known as mate value. So for the rest of this video, I'm gonna go into the specifics of mate value, what kind of collection of traits influence your value or your score, and how you can influence those things to give yourself the best possible chances of getting the highest number you can. Now, of course, there is no real number, and I don't wanna sound reductive in terms of, you know, putting everyone with a label of, you are valued at this number, but in terms of, the superficial aspect of early stage dating, it really does ride on this whole idea of your mate value. So like I said, there are a few things that you can do that can shift for the better or worse where you stand. And there are some things that are genetically influenced, so you can't change it. But I guarantee you with the right information and the right mindset, you can really take yourself up to the next level. Essentially, the higher the mate value, the more selective you can be when choosing a partner. So this is why it's important because you want options, but you also want the right options. You don't wanna be at a point where you're so severely limited that you have to settle for someone even though they're not compatible purely because you don't have any options. So it's worth pointing out that mate value consists of a number of different traits. And there are some traits that are gender non-specific, So it applies to everyone, regardless of what gender you are. If you have these traits, or depending on how much of these traits you have, you boost your mate value. Whereas other traits, although they're you know, still valued, they're valued differently depending on what gender you're in and what gender you're looking at in terms of attraction. So some of the general traits that apply are health, appearance, age, 
sense of humor, kindness, intelligence, and emotional stability. So these kinds of things, which you can kind of know very quickly from looking at the list, that some of them are fixed and other are dynamic. And the dynamic ones, I guarantee you, because I've tried this myself, not intentionally, but over you know several years, some of these things in my own life have kind of gone up or down. And I've noticed for sure that depending on which direction they go in, my perceived mate value or the kind of options I have or how I'm perceived when I go into a situation, whether it's on a date or in a bar or whatever it may be, these things depend heavily on some of the general ones that I mentioned. But also there are some kind of gender specific traits as well, which definitely apply. And like I said, they apply to varying degrees depending on that gender. So a classic example would be self-esteem. This is something that has varied in my life. I've gone from a point where I've had relatively good self-esteem to having relatively low self-esteem. And as my self-esteem has kind of grown, particularly in the last few years, I noticed that you appear as a result more confident, which generally is an attractive trait. And as a result of that, you end up kind of without realizing you have a kind of a skip in your stride, you act differently, you talk differently, and these things kind of form invisible cues that are generally attractive in all cases. So when I've looked back over the last 10 years or so, I've definitely noticed that shift, both in terms of my self-esteem and confidence, but also the correlation that it's had on my own, say, perceived desirability or how popular I felt or how likely I've been in terms of being able to get a date. So I can definitely feel confident in sharing that these things do matter. But there are some traits that also matter, but matter differently depending on what gender you are. So for guys, in terms of what women typically value in men, there are, I would say, there are several traits, but I would say the three main ones are physicality, confidence slash intelligence and status slash security. So these collective traits are weighed, I would say roughly equally. So roughly 33% each in terms of the value that is placed on each of those traits. So you will notice that most of those traits are dynamic in that they are variable. So by changing, let's say your status or your confidence or you know, your overall physicality, whether it's going to the gym, you'll find that these things don't solely influence your chances, but definitely influence them to some extent. So for women, in terms of what men value in women, there are also three things, but this time they're not kind of given equal weight or equal priority. And the three things are beauty and appearance, emotional stability, and empathy. So again, some of these things are fixed, some of them are not, but the difference between men and women is men tend to value beauty and appearance a lot higher than the other way around. So while physicality is given roughly 33% weight, in terms of what men value in women, it's given a lot higher. And I know it kind of sounds superficial, but early stage dating is inherently superficial because you're going on things you don't know about the other person other than what you can see or tell from a distance. So for better or worse, men tend to be very visual creatures. So they put a lot of emphasis on the appearance of things. And although, like I said, it's superficial, it also has many kind of side effects in terms of the way society has gone. It kind of explains why even things like cars and so on, men tend to be really, you know, driven to, pun intended, tend to be driven to get things that look nice, a nice car, a nice house, etc. Whereas women, when it comes to appearance, although it's still important, it's a different type of dynamic. So I've always found that men value raw looks, whereas women value the narrative, the story that someone tells about themselves in the way that they walk, speak and act. So I've been reliably informed in terms of if people go into a bar, when a guy sees a girl who he's attracted to, it doesn't take much for him to notice and be attracted to her. Whereas for the girl being attracted to the guy, it's a little bit different in that it's not the looks by themselves that make the person attractive, it's the narrative of that person. So that person could be wearing a suit or 
he could be you know wearing a leather jacket or have just come off a motorbike or whatever it may be the story that that person tells by the way that they act and speak and what they're wearing will kind of influence the narrative that that girl has about that guy and this narrative is what the girl typically is attracted to as opposed to the raw rugged look of the guy so now that you know what traits influence your mate value hopefully you can kind of deduce what things you can do in order to improve your standing and again if it's appearance for example then maybe taking care of yourself because health is a universally valued trait so taking care of yourself physically mentally and so on is definitely a good thing also you know things like confidence and self-esteem while it might seem like a challenge to improve those things it can be done there are many things you can do in terms of activities socially or even just put into practice a couple of things so in future videos i'm going to go into things like how you can increase your self-esteem and a couple of other things that are relevant to the stuff that was mentioned here but also stay tuned for some imminent videos on some of the subsequent stages of dating so okay now that you know what influences your chances of getting dates how do you know how to find the right kind of person and how do you know that you found them if you're dating someone so this will be covered soon and then eventually i'll go on to stuff like relationships what are the traits that science and research has shown that correlates with healthy relationships and hopefully you find that useful too so i'm going to leave that here and i will see you in the next one